but you got the jungle tiger and you got the zoo tiger. I don't know if you've ever heard this story, but you can look it up online. And it's very, very fitting to a baseball player, okay? If you go to the zoo and you see the tiger at the zoo, every day he gets fed at the same time, right? No change in his environment whatsoever. No struggle in his life whatsoever. Just lays around all day, pretty lazy. Knows what to expect. No challenge, no struggle whatsoever right that's a zoo tiger and then you got a jungle tiger a jungle tiger wakes up every day and he's got to fight every other predator in the wild so that he can eat and survive so that's a lot of struggle that's a lot of stress and there's a lot of fight in a jungle tiger but the moral of the story is that they're the same animal so what's the difference? It's the environment in which they are in that makes them who they are. So as a baseball player, if you don't challenge yourself in your environment, you're gonna be the zoo tiger, okay? If you don't challenge yourself in the weight room, if you don't surround yourself with people who challenge you, if you don't push yourself in practice, you don't play hard, if you can't deal with the stress and the failure, what kind of player are you going to be? You're certainly not going to maximize your career. You're certainly not going to get all the good that comes with the failure and the struggle and the challenge of being a baseball player as it applies to your life after baseball. Okay? So you got to embrace that struggle, embrace the challenge, create the environment that's going to make you grow as a young man and as a baseball player, okay? You want to train like a jungle tiger, okay? Because if you take a jungle tiger right here and a zoo tiger right here and turn them loose, which one are you going to put your money on, jungle. right? There ain't no question who you put your money on because one, deals with adversity and stress and has to fight for everything he gets, okay? That's what toughness is, all right? Integrity, ah, integrity. There is not a player out there who doesn't have God-given ability to play at the next level that when a coach calls his coaches, he's going to ask him what type of young man is he? Okay, not only do we want to recruit talented players, we all know that. That's a given. You have to have God-given ability to play at a place like a Clemson. But we want high character, high makeup players. Makeup, that's a big word in our program and in a lot of others. Okay, high integrity. So what's integrity? You got to define all these attributes that you want yourself to have. Integrity is do you live your life publicly and privately the same way? When you're off the field with your friends, are you the same guy as you are when you're on the field? Are you the same guy in the classroom? Are you the same guy all the time who makes good choices and good decisions and when he makes a mistake, He's accountable for it, right? Because we all make mistakes. Nobody's perfect, okay? Your hand, it has a thumb and it has a finger, right? When you hold it up, that thumb points to you and that finger points to somebody else. Which type of guy are you when you make a mistake or when things don't go well? I'm not playing my best baseball will point the finger at somebody else. It's the coach's fault, or it's this guy's fault, or it's this person's fault. Or are you going to start pointing your thumb at yourself and say, it's up to me? Right or wrong? Right. Your career is up to you. So point, look at the thumb, not the finger. Okay? It takes some accountability and maturity to live a life of integrity. Okay, do the right things all the time and be accountable when you make mistakes. 
Live your life publicly and privately the same way. Okay? Be authentic. Okay? G is gratitude. Show some gratitude. Okay? Here's how you can show gratitude in life. Number one, don't complain about anything. If you're healthy enough physically to be here in camp, what do you have to complain about? Honestly. If you can run around on a baseball field and swing a bat, throw a ball, and play on a team, you, can, you get to play on a team and play baseball and play sports. If you're healthy enough to be here today, what do you have to complain about? Parents too, right? Show some gratitude. You either get to be here or you have to be here. And I can tell you this, you better pay attention in the classroom and make good grades so that one day you have a career and a profession that you get to do. There's a lot of people that have to go to their job every day and don't get to go to their job every day. I get to go and work at the best university in the country and coach baseball for a living. That's a beautiful thing. I got nothing to complain about. Even when we get beat, life is hard as a coach. Trust me. Okay? But I get to do this every day, and I never lose sight of that. And you get to do what you do every day. And when your feet hit the floor in the morning, if you believe that, you say, I get to do what I'm about to do today, and you don't have to do it, it'll change your life with how you handle everything. Just don't complain about anything because you got nothing to complain about, <laughs> period, okay? And you'll see a huge change in yourself when you just quit complaining, okay? Show some gratitude to your coaches and your teachers and your parents, okay? When you look at those bags you drag around, all those bats and spikes and gloves and travel ball expenses, do you know how expensive it is to be a baseball player? If I picked up one of your bags, I guarantee you there's probably seven, maybe $800 in there, right? I mean, a really good glove, a good piece of leather, several hundred dollars. Good bat, several hundred dollars, right? Batting gloves, helmets. And then you start talking about hotel costs. How many of you stayed in a hotel while you're here? How many of you stay in hotels when you go play baseball a majority of the time and travel ball? Okay. All right, now I'm going to ask your parents a question. How many of you parents stayed in hotels when you played ball in high school? Any of you? Okay, I'm going to ask you another question. How many of you guys, you baseball players, have a job right now? You have a job. Raise your hand high. All right, put your hand down. Parents, how many of you had a job when you were in high school? Almost all of them. Almost all of them, okay? Because your parents' generation, they were told if you want something, you've got to go work for it. I don't have the money, son, daughter. I don't have the money to give you to play travel ball. We don't, I don't make that kind of money, okay? That's the honest to God truth. If you want something, you got to go get a job. It's not like that now. For you that have a job, good for you. Because you begin to earn or learn the value of a dollar in hard work. Okay? But your parents sacrifice an awful lot for you to play baseball. If you play travel baseball, it costs a lot of money. For you to have the kind of gear you have, it costs a lot of money. When I played baseball, the coach brought a coaching bag. You ain't never seen one of them. <laughs> and that bag had two bats and four helmets and about a dozen baseballs in it. And when you fouled one of those balls off, two people went to go get it. Mm -hmm. And that was all you had. Dads, right? Moms that played softball, right? That's all you had. I didn't own my own bat until I was a freshman in college. My own bat and I got it for Christmas. I didn't wear batting gloves until I got to college. I used the same glove, I'm left-handed. I used the same glove to pitch, play first base, and the outfield the whole time I was in high school. Same glove. Didn't know any different. 
right? Didn't know any different. There wasn't nothing wrong with it until somebody told me, why are you using that glove to play that position? Well, that's just what the glove I got, right? It's different. Show some gratitude. Thank your parents for sending you to camp. Thank your parents for paying for you to play travel baseball. Thank your coaches, your high school coaches. You know, everybody's hard on high school coaches, right? You know how much money your high school coaches make to coach you? A lot of them make like $2,000, $3,000 maybe supplement-wise to coach high school baseball. And they make next to nothing to be teachers. So how about show them some gratitude? They do it because they love it. They do it because they love it, okay? You make sure you show your coach some gratitude. Hey, thanks coach. Thank your teachers. I know what it's like to be a teacher. I taught for four years, okay? Teachers deal with an awful lot. Make sure you thank your teachers in, in, the, in the classroom. They appreciate those kind of things. They do it because they love teaching, not because of the money, okay? Show your parents some gratitude. Clean your freaking room up. Say that two times. Okay? Clean your freaking room up, okay? Take the trash out. <coughs> Wash the dishes. Okay, do things around the house to help your parents out and show a little gratitude. They spent a lot of money to put you in this position. Okay? E is excellence. Okay? Excellence all starts in the classroom. Starts in the classroom. Okay? Some of you guys may not get a chance to play college baseball. You may not. I hope all of you do. But some of you may not. You know what? You want to have options when it comes to school. It's really that simple. 95% of the guys that sign a professional baseball contract never play a day in the big leagues. That's the guys that get drafted and signed. So if you don't think that a college degree matters, it does. Make sure you've got options. The only way you're going to have options when it comes to, to schools is if you make good grades. And it's getting harder and harder to get into some colleges and more and more expensive. Right, Mom and Dad? It ain't cheap to go to college now. So you better make good grades so you might be able to get some academic money as well. Okay, so strive for excellence in the classroom. Whatever you're going to do, be great at it. Okay? Or relentless. Okay? You can see a player on the field who is relentless. You can see relentless work ethic in the weight room. You go to watch a guy work out in the weight room, I can see if he's relentless or not. Okay? Does he have the intensity and the fire that you're looking for in a player? You can see that intensity and fire on the field too. How hard does he run the bases? Does he dive and lay out on ground balls? Does he back up bases? Does he get up on the plate and choke up and compete with two strikes? Will he take a HBP? When he's got runners on base, does he execute pitches? When the heat goes up and the pressure goes up, does he compete for his team first? Is he relentless? And he never quits, he never gives in. The best players play the game the same way all the time. <laughs> They don't care what the score is. They're up 8-2 or they're down 8-2. They are not going to give up in it bad. And they're going to play hard from the first pitch of the game to the last pitch of the game. That's what I call relentless. Okay? That's toughness over talent, which is on our shirts. You saw our guys walking by some today. Did you see what their shirt said? It says toughness over talent. Okay? Last but not least is selfish. Be selfless. Always put your team first. Because when we call your coaches, that's what we're going to ask them. What kind of teammate is he? We know he's talented, man. We know he's a really good player. What kind of teammate is he? Like, Coach, he don't care about nothing but winning. If I needed him to play center field or first base or catch or whatever, if I needed him to do something to help us win, he would do it. He'd play any position we ask him to play if that means it's helping his team win games. Okay, you always remember that. Somebody asks you, what position do I play? I play first base, but I'll play wherever you need me to help you win a game. Okay, 
Be selfless. Always put your team first. Because I'm going to leave you with this. Nobody's going to remember your pop time if you're a catcher. Nobody's going to remember your average exit velocity or your fastball velocity or your spin rate or your ERA or your batting average from high school. Nobody's going to remember any of that but you and your parents. That's about it. Okay? But what people will remember is were you a part of a championship team? Did you win a state championship? Did you win a conference championship? Did you win a world championship? People remember those things. And those are things you can carry with you all the time for the rest of your life. Okay? So you might as well play the game for your team first. Because that's what people are going to remember. That's what you're going to remember as a player is did you help your team win when you got a chance to play the game? So be selfless. Okay? Your biggest goal this year, outside of just enjoying being able to go out and compete every day, is every guy here, try to be the best teammate on your team this year. That's something you can control, right or wrong. I can control that. I'm going to be the best teammate on my team this year. I'm going to help the coaches set up the field and break it down, I'm going to tell all my teammates to do the same dang thing, right? Y'all get your rear ends out of the dugout and clean up. Help coach set up and break down the field, right? You encourage the guy on the mound when he's pitching. Encourage the guy at the plate when he's hitting. Good or bad. Good or bad, okay? Be the best teammate on your team this year. You can control that, okay? I know a lot of you got a long way to go uh, driving-wise, but, again, I appreciate you coming here today, and good luck this spring. Come see us play, and go Tigers. Thank you all.